Fuck you, game. Okay, I saved your daughter, and I had to go through some kind of dimensional tunnel that Outer Heaven dug between their buildings to do it, the same way nightmares of this place will burrow through the in-between spaces of my brain forevermore. Just, Doc, please, throw me a bone here so I can get the fuck out. Metal Gear is 20 kilometers north of this building. It's located 100 floors under Building 3, and no, no, you don't actually have to go through 100 floors to get there, but when I first read that, I had my horrifying suspicions it could be true. There is only one way to destroy Metal Gear. Attach plastic explosives to the legs of the unit where the armor is thin. The sequence is R R L R L L R R R After that, I don't remember. At least he might have an excuse. You know, the trauma of him and his daughter being kidnapped, being forced to work on weapons of mass destruction. He gets a pass. At least he's trying to be helpful. He also tells you that you need to kill Bloody Brad for the next access card, and he's talking about this guy. This is where the localization really does the original dirty, because Bloody Brad doesn't go nearly far enough to what explains why there's two of him. In the Japanese version of the game, his name is Arnold, a TX-11 model cyberoid developed by Dr. Madna when he was taken captive by Outer Heaven, because Hideo Kojima is an unapologetic cinephile. And I'm not just basing that on his Twitter feed, I mean look, he named the resistance leader in the game Kyle, and then made Snake on the box art look like Kyle Reese. Though if you ask me, the portraits in the manual make him look more like MacGyver. To take down Arnold Bloody Brad TX-11 Schwarzenegger, you need a rocket launcher, and this brings us to the last step of progression for Metal Gear. It's time to call Jennifer. Remember a while back when I said that the antenna was the most essential item in the game and how you need to be saving these dudes along the way? But this is why. Each one of those dudes you save gives you a little bit of XP, slowly leveling up your class. Each level is meant to increase the carry limits on your rations and ammo, but I'm pretty sure your class level is just ignored by the pity party the game throws for you whenever you die too many times, so it's never really come up before now. <laughs> They've really done the game down over the years. But getting to four star is a requirement for calling Jennifer, as is picking up the antenna, and without either of those things, you're not getting any further. See, calling Jennifer most of the time doesn't even get a response, but if you go to this one specific point on the second floor and call her, she'll not only answer you, but pull off an impressive display of stealth that puts Snake to shame, somehow sneaking a goddamn rocket launcher into the next room, without being seen, while I've got guards crawling all over my ass. Why am I even here? Jennifer's clearly got this, we should just be sending her in. I have no idea how you are supposed to know how to do all of this without just randomly cycling through radio stations all the time, which is what I started doing after aimlessly wandering around for an hour or so. I mean, you could just stumble around like I did and eventually work it out, but if you got really stuck and had no shame, you could just look it up on the dozens of guides that now exist for the game on the internet. But put yourselves in the shoes of some kid from 1987. You've got this game for a computer, all of which probably cost a small fortune at the time, so you're going to be playing the absolute shit out of this game to make it last. But then five minutes in, the elevators are all fucked up, the floors keep giving way, this creepy arsehole won't stop calling you, and then you get to this bit, maybe missing one of the things that you need, and then what do you do? The internet doesn't exist yet, and your friend, you know the one, the one that's perpetually covered in chip dust and is consistently full of shit, keeps telling you to use something called the Konami code, whatever the fuck that is. I assume there's probably a cut radio conversation somewhere that clues you into what you're supposed to do, or maybe it is in there, but at this point in the original port, all you would have had to rely on was the beep beep broken English. Obviously, I'm glad it did, but it's baffling to me that this series managed to gain traction outside of Japan. You know what? It's fine. Doesn't matter. I've got what I need now. I'm back with better fucking missiles, Brad. So now that I've got card 7, you're probably thinking it's time for more door dancing, and we'll get there. But Jennifer isn't quite done yet. First you gotta head up from where you fought Bloody Brad and to the right, call her again, have her unlock the door somehow, I don't know, she might be a witch, and then pick up the compass, because you're not getting to where you're going without it. There's one more stretch of desert that you have to get past, and you're gonna need the compass to guide your way, because that whole place is scorpion country. They thrash around like they've been into shop maker's mess. If they sting you, it'll poison you, and I fucking swear they can smell your fear because if they get too close, they actually move faster towards you. Fuck these things, kill them on sight, and if you have to use your antidote, which you better hope you picked up earlier, make damn sure you switch back to the compass when you're done, or it'll be a never-ending nightmare of these things as you get lost in the desert, aka repeatedly walking into the same screen over and over, which will always be filled with scorpions. You don't catch a break either, because once you pass those things, it's headlong into a firing line line of trucks with soldiers pouring out of them. 
Oh, hey, asshole. I haven't heard from you in a while. And he wants you to get into the truck on the right. Yes, good. He's finally doing something useful and giving me support. So naturally, I take cover. Okay, that had to be deliberate. Alright. It's easier to just die and respawn in the desert than it is to walk all the way back there. So when you get back, you just run straight through, go inside. And while you're being attacked by these guys, Big Boss calls you to tell you to go through the door on your left. Look, I'm not really keen to keep taking his advice, but there's literally no end to these soldiers and there aren't any other doors in the room. So let's just have a quick look and it's another hole. My superior officer is trying to kill me. Good. This is it. I'm on my own now. It's time to employ every strategy that the game has taught me. Punching wall. I think this is for that massive fucking canal I couldn't swim up before. Uh, okay, okay. Backtracking. So once you've disabled the electric floor in here, we go into this room on the left first so you can stock up an ammo, because you're gonna need it. And then Kyle Schneider calls you to tell you that he's figured out who the boss of Outer Heaven is. But before he can tell you who the boss of Outer Heaven is, he apparently necks it off screen. <laughs> Moving along, the other room on the right has the next boss fight. Dirty Doug which used to be Coward Duck, which is in itself a reference to Howard the Duck, a literal fucking who of a character that anyone under 40 only knows about because of his recent cameo in the MCU, but along with the Terminator reference would be wiped away because even in 2006 when this localization was largely put together, it still wasn't too early for Konami to try and remove Kojima's influence. And Jennifer calls you to tell you that one of the three hostages in the room is her brother, and if he gets killed then she's not helping you anymore. I have a, I have a strong feeling that it won't actually matter which of these guys get killed, they're always going to end up being her brother, so shooting my way through isn't really an option. So this guy throws... boomerangs. Yeah, that's what those look like, let's go with that. He, he's throwing boomerangs down the side of the room and trying to walk straight down the middle gives way to another fucking pit trap! Standing still at the back of the room isn't an option either, so you could either move extremely carefully to maneuver your way toward him, or you could just do this. Huh. I guess it did matter. I'm Jennifer's brother. When you make your escape, climb the ladder on the left. And with that, we have the last card key. And getting back to the underground base, you can rescue a hostage in here who reveals the Outer Heaven boss is Foxhound's commanding officer, Big Boss. You don't fucking say! I mean, even in 1987, players would have figured it out long before this point, but there's still lingering questions of why he sent me here, and why he was helping me at all in the first place. He calls you to psychomantis things up a little bit, telling you to turn off your PC and abort the mission, and of course he doesn't make it easy, this last section pulls out all the stops to try and kill you, including a soft wall that will just absolutely halt your progress unless you've stocked up on rations. And then... Are you ready to be disappointed? The TX-55 model Metal Gear is the one that started it all, and in no particular order it's equipped with a Vulcan gun, a laser cannon, two massive legs upon which is presumably several tons of machinery that could easily crush a person, and nuclear goddamn missiles. You get to see exactly none of it in action though, and I don't know whether this is due to the limitations of the platform, or they didn't have the time to code and animate the thing, but Metal Gear is just completely docile, and quietly sits through you bombing the absolute shit out of it, while a pair of security lasers are all that's there to stop you. Why were we afraid of Metal Gear again? 
Uh, now, what was it again? R R L R L L R. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Emergency! Emergency! The self-destruct sequence for Outer Heaven. It is the base. Has been initialized. All personnel are ordered to evacuate immediately. Solid Snake, I've been expecting you. I am the Supreme Commander of the Foxhound Unit, and the leader of the Fortress of Outta Heaven. Big Buck. Wait, hang on. Of Outta Heaven? So is it the fucking base or the group? Make up your fucking mind, game. I gave this mission to you, a rookie, thinking I could use you to fool the rest of the world. So then why did you send Grey Fox in first if you wanted to send a rookie? And what were you trying to convince the world of? That you were actually good guys and these disappearances were just mere coincidences? Surely if I didn't come back, then someone else would have just- But you were too good. You went too far, Solid Snake. I'm not going down alone. I'm taking you with me. Prepare to die! It's the final boss fight with Big Boss himself. The last boss- You know what? Let's just throw our brain. How should I handle this one, Diane? Perfect. Well, rockets were good enough to kill a Terminator analog, they should be good enough for him. You know, they get better as the series progresses, but goddamn the bosses suck in this game. With Big Boss dead, it's time to make good on your escape. There was something I was supposed to remember for this though, right? I'm Jeff's brother. When you make your escape, climb the ladder on the right. Yeah, look, I'm not a clever man. I absolutely took the ladder on the right before I took the one on the left. Climbing the ladder on the left takes you out of the base and you're treated to a small cutscene of Snake running from the exploding base, presumably because someone dug too many holes in the munition storage. He looks back and radios in that the mission was a success, begins muttering to himself and what I'm sure Foxhound would deny is the stirrings of PTSD, as a news broadcast announces that an earthquake was registered in South Africa, which I think is actually the first in-game confirmation of where Out of Heaven actually is. So, so wait, hang on, is, is that it? Yeah, pretty much, there is a boss rush mode that you unlock after beating the game. Yeah, fuck it, let's give it a try. Dead, 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 fuck you, fuck you tank! Dead, and then... Now you know what? Chicken's good enough, this isn't pro Metal Gear. And is this worth playing 33 years later? If you're into Metal Gear as a whole, sure. There's a lot of connecting tissue here to enjoy. Sleeping guards, plot twists, gorging yourself on food to magically heal your wounds, Fourth wall breaking, Metal, Metal Gear. Gear. This is the genesis of all of it. And if you can stand the frustrations, then it's probably worth at least one playthrough. So canonically, what did we actually just do? Well, there's some retconning involved and additional story threads that were never originally part of the game, but were later woven into its events after the fact. So let's just start with the basics. First of all, anytime you see a Japanese show or a game that uses something like 19XX or 20XX, etc., that's just a shorthand for somewhere in this time period to keep it nebulous enough for flexibility and from being pegged down to any particular date. It's probably not exactly that, and there's maybe some nuance that I'm likely missing there, but that's kind of the easiest way to understand it. Out of Heaven, which is decidedly the fortress and not the terrorist force, I don't know what they're called. I haven't played Metal Gear Solid 5. What are they, like the Phantom Diamonds? That fortress is, in itself, a fortified nation state established by Big Boss in the 80s, located 200 kilometers north of Galsberg, South Africa, a fake African nation, which it turns out is just one of many fake African nations, why do we keep making these? The events of Metal Gear take place in 1995, starting with the kidnapping of Dr. Drago Petrovich Madna and his daughter, Ellen, without a heaven immediately putting the doctor to work on weapons. Later that same year, intelligence leaked to the Western world about a weapon of mass destruction being built deep within the fortress. Big Boss, using his control of Foxhound, first sends Grey Fox in to infiltrate out of heaven and gather intelligence about the weapon. I don't, I'm still not sure why he did that. After a few days, Grey Fox sends a final transmission before all contact is lost. Just two words, Metal Gear. 
In response to this, Solid Snake is sent in to rescue Grey Fox and destroy the ultimate weapon Metal Gear, because somehow from just those two words, Foxham was apparently able to determine that it was a weapon at all, which really should have been the first red flag about Big Boss. At this point, Snake is a Foxham rookie who joined with the unit sometime between 1991 and 1995, whose background is largely spoiler territory at this stage, but received extensive training before the events of Metal Gear, including CQC training, or close quarter combat, from Big Boss himself. There was additional support provided during the mission. First, there was Kyle Schneider, leader of the resistance movement from within Outer Heaven, and there's not really much more information about him right now. Jennifer, apparent ninja master who infiltrated Outer Heaven's medical staff independently from Foxhound or any other military unit, primarily to search for her missing brother, but along the way also helping Snake out with things like scorpion antidotes and rocket launchers, what a fucking legend. And Diane, former pop star turned informant who now uses her feminine charm to gather intelligence for the Outer Heaven Resistance movement. That's a cool backstory, but not only is it never expanded on in the game, it's never even really mentioned, and half the time she isn't even there when you call her. It's her brother Steve answering when she's not around, and at one point he straight up tells Snake to fuck off and stop calling his sister, because maybe he's become sensitive about her banging dudes in the base for info. That's your problem, man, don't take it out of me. Diane's a grown woman, she can do whatever she wants. This particular conversation with Steve is also the only setup you get for the near confession from Diane about her love for Snake when you call her during the big boss fight, right after confirming for a second time that she doesn't know what a rocket launcher is. During the infiltration, Snake rescued Grey Fox and several other POWs including Dr. Madna, his daughter, and Jennifer's brother. Shortly before Snake confronted Big Boss, Schneider fell into enemy hands and was later presumed dead after the mission. After destroying Metal Gear and apparently killing Big Boss, Snake makes his escape, as do Dr. Matna, his daughter, Jennifer and her brother, and Diane who gives a shit. Hey wait, Jennifer never actually really helped me again, did she? Did I actually need to keep her brother alive?